to call the returning officer to the front, please, of the room. Tori Pearson again, everyone. <laughs> Tori, would you please hand me the official results? <laughs> to your estimation, was the election conducted fairly and within the ethical rules and expectations of the party? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks very much, Tori. Stay here, right? Stay here. <laughs> Chair, come up here, please. I want to make sure I know which information to communicate and which I'm not supposed to. Turn the mic on. <laughs> <laughs> Sing for us, Tori. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants me to do that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I'll do the council stuff after. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an extraordinary weekend, and it's been an extraordinary race. I won't spend a lot of time talking about this. I can only imagine how your hearts are pumping on your chest for five people in this room right now. Uh, all I can ask is that we get behind the next elected leader. Here, that here. we do our very best. that we do our very best to support the next leader and that the candidates themselves find it within them um, to help bring us together as a united party. The work ahead in the, the more than 500 days left before the next election is enormous and it's going, to, it's going to take all of you. But we do have a winner. In 2007, for the Green Party of British Columbia, the membership has voted and they have elected James Stirk. <laughs> Running in 2015. <laughs> so the, the maximum you 
have me for is um, is eight years. <laughs> and if I decide, change my mind at that point in time, and decide that I, oh, I want to stay a little bit longer, I know that somebody will tell me, Jane, it's time to go. I've had several incidents in my life where that happened. When I was writing my dissertation, uh, and it was taking me forever to do it, uh, my statistics guy, who I was afraid of, because I'm not a stats person, said, Jane, write it up. You're done. And when I had a business that um, was not financially viable, uh, the guy that I admired the most, my technical guy, said, Jane, it's time to call it a day. And so I know that I have friends and um, probably a spouse that will tell me <laughs> when it's time to go. And another reason for that is that I have plans for thing that I, things that I want to do when I, while I'm still young. For some of you, my young might feel 40, but for me it's looking like 70 or 80. <laughs> and um, one of the things I want to do with my husband is to spend some time in Holland. I uh, went there this last summer and I really want to have an opportunity to be immersed in another culture. Great place. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I want to take a, just a few minutes to thank um, my supporters. I'm not going to thank them all by name. Um, but I want to talk, uh, thank some of the people that uh, phoned on my behalf in the last uh, push to get out the vote. And the people who are in the room, I had about 30 to 40 people that were phoning on my behalf. But people that are here are Murray Gudmundson, Ian Brakeson, Murray Weisenberger, John Sturk, my husband, Walter Myers and James Falcon, Henry De Hendrick DePactor, Diane Perry, Garth Woodworth, Crystal Watson, um, Stephen Hurdle, Cheryl McLaughlin, and Gordon Folka. I also want to thank. Um, John and Ian, how long they thought I could speak, and they said, well, you can speak as long as you want. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm not going to speak forever. Um, I also would like to, to thank publicly Hi Friedman. He's a fellow counselor on a spinal council. He's also my financial agent and a very strict CA, so uh, nothing passes by him. And he's also a very good friend. I want to thank Stella Archer and Steve Birch, who did my website. I see Anne Clementis there, I also want to thank her for phoning. Uh, I want to thank Ian Gregson, who, for whatever presence I had on Facebook, it was due to, due to Ian. I'm uh, actually um, it's Facebook challenged, I think they were. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to thank um, mayors and councillors in uh, this greater Victoria region. When I decided to run, I uh, approached several people and I said, would you be willing to write a statement about me and how I am in your experience of me. And I didn't ask them to do that as an endorsement for me as leader, but simply would you make a statement. And Mayor Hill and uh, Mayor Clement, Mayor Hill is the, the mayor of Iroa, and Mayor Clement is the mayor of Esquimalt. Both uh, immediately uh, decided to do that, and I have a, uh, comments from uh, Councillor Andrew Fall from the Highlands, uh, Sonia Chandler from Victoria, uh, Karen Green from North Saanich, and again, Hi Friedman from my council. I asked others, and they felt that uh, they didn't want to make that kind of a statement because they had party affiliations that they, they felt would be compromised. So, this campaign, especially the last part of it, which I found particularly difficult, reminded me about what's important in life. Sometimes I forget that in the, in the busyness of the day. Also, I attended at the UBCM conference a lecture by Thomas Homer Dixon, who some of you know from the University of Toronto as a political scientist. I was quite embarrassed on the part of uh, municipal officials. There were less than 100 people in the room out of a conference of um, several thousand. Anyway, one of the things that he said at the very close of his uh, discussion, which was about climate change and the importance of taking action, uh, was that um, you remember your grandchildren. And um, so I wanted to show you mine. <laughs> and, and the reason, 
And the reason, one of the reasons that I decided to enter this race is because of Sam. Sam is um, 20 months old and uh, a wonderful, wonderful child. He's, he's going to give his parents as much trouble as his, as his uh, dad gave us, and, uh, which is very delightful. So that's Sam, that's, and that's one reason. The other reason is my son and his wife, and my other son and his wife. Uh, they're our future, they're my future, and uh, I felt I could not, uh, in the days ahead, say to Sam that I didn't take an opportunity to do something that would make a difference. And I believe... So on Monday morning, I'll be on CBC on the Island at 7.15. Finally! <laughs> Some of you may have heard the political panel on Friday where Bob Plekis, uh, a retired, I stress the tired part, <laughs> so Fred, I said we won't be relevant in 2009 and we'd be lucky to get 5%. Elizabeth Call, a former NDP cabinet minister, said, if the Green Party didn't exist, most would vote for the NDP, and, and the rest that wouldn't vote for the NDP are just a protest group. <laughs> Clark Roberts made the only sensible comment that I heard, which was that he would vote Green if he wasn't voting Liberal. And uh, even he doesn't give us much of a chance, um, but he felt it was dependent on the leader and our policies. So I've been on that panel several times, and obviously I didn't make a positive impression when I was on the panel. So it should be an interesting moment on Monday when I uh, challenge those perspectives. Uh, you've seen the, the press. Yeah, until today, uh, the Times columnists didn't even address the race. Their only article this week was on Christopher Bennett. It had nothing to do with the leadership race. Mark Hume in the Woven Mail said, vote NDP. Uh, those of you who go online to some of the online uh, alternative uh, newspapers will know that the Tai kind of writes us off, many of their writers. Uh, Ish Thielman from uh, Straight Goods said that in the Ontario election that the Green Party policy was incomprehensible. Um, so to the press and political pundits who believe that the Green Party is not going to maintain our support, let alone improve it, I say just watch us. Yeah.